Today I'm teaching you David Blaine's self-working card trick. Yo, it's your boy Six and welcome back to the Card Magic tutorial. You see, about 10 years ago I was watching some David Blaine YouTube videos and I came across one in which he taught an effect. And it's a really cool self-working trick that's very simple to do, but very, very powerful. Listen, if it's good enough for David Blaine to perform, it's good enough for you. Uh, it's really, really good and I think you're gonna love it. Uh, I was going through the comments in which he explains it and people were kind of confused. They were like, I don't really get it, but I'm still amazed. And you can even see the reactions of the people that he performed it for and then explained it to and they were still kind of confused after he taught it. So I wanted to go ahead, take some time to make it very clear. We'll go step by step through it. It's a really cool, really simple effect that you're absolutely gonna love. So let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of David Blaine's self-working card trick. All right, these right here are the Believe playing cards. And if you like these and want to win some, well, I found a way to do it because YouTube has some policies and I want to respect YouTube's policies and rules uh, in order for me to give stuff away. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an email list, which I just did. So click the description uh, down below. There is a link there uh, and you can sign up to my email list and you'll get chances to win great playing cards like the Believe playing cards, as well as uh, behind the scenes photos. And of course, uh, you'll be the first to know every time I drop a video. And I'll also be teaching you some stuff that I'm not going to be teaching on this channel. You can only get it by signing up to the email list. So if you want to win some free playing cards, be sure to go ahead and sign up for that. And here's what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm using today is David Blaine's uh, Gatorback playing cards. Uh, we're gonna be using these. Uh, also, I'll link down to these below if you like them, you wanna try to find them. I'm not sure if they're for sale anymore, but I'll drop a link. Uh, these are gorgeous, I love these cards. But let's go ahead and look at the performance of this self-working trick. What's gonna happen is I'll start off by mixing the cards a little bit just like this, you get the idea. And we'll give the cards a little shuffle. I like to play fair, that's a real good mix right there. I'm gonna have the spectator to my right here. I'm gonna say, go ahead, cut off a packet about less than half the cards, and I want you to hold on to those cards, and the spectator will hold on to those cards. And I go to this spectator over here, and I'm gonna tell this spectator, what I'd like you to do is you're gonna go ahead, uh, go in there and remove any card that you like. So they go ahead and remove any card that they like. Let's say that one, and they're gonna get to show it to everybody. So you're everybody, so there you go, that'll be the card. And then I'm gonna have the spectator go ahead and place their card back. Uh, it goes back inside the pack, and again, I like to play fair. I'll even throw in a cut just like this and lose their card somewhere in the pack. Now, uh, this spectator has been holding on to the cards the entire time. This spectator is holding those cards. Well, I'm going to tell them to take these cards and I want you to deal down onto the table and stop whenever you like. It's freely up to you. Whenever you want to stop, you can go ahead and stop. So the spectator will deal the cards just like you see here. And let's say they stop right here. And I can give them a choice. They can deal some more, take some away. It's really up to them. But they stop here and they land on the nine of clubs. So we're going to use that nine. Now, if you would have won one card before, you would have had a 10. Different outcome, right? If you would have won one card after, you would have had a six. Again, different outcome. But you stopped on the nine. Well, let's try something. If I just cast a shadow over the cards and the spectator has been holding them the entire time. I say grab those cards and I want you to deal down nine cards, the number that they decided on. Not me, that they chose freely. Deal down nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn that card over, and would you believe it? The spectator's card, the seven of clubs, a perfect coincidence. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tutorial. All right, so in order to do this trick, you have to go to the pack and remove some cards. In this case, you're removing the four eights as well as the four nines. And just for clarification here, I'm gonna show you two ways in which you can do it. I'm gonna show you the absolute beginner way, which is completely self-working, no skill required. And then I'll show you how you can do it with some advanced touches as you saw that I did in the performance to make it even more amazing. So you kind of get best of both worlds here. So make sure you watch the entire video to get all that great information because I'm dropping some knowledge on this one. Uh, so go ahead, take out the fours, uh, four nines and the four eights, uh, and you're gonna go ahead and shuffle those up. Um, so these cards are then going to be placed on the top of the pack uh, because this is going to be part of your setup. And I'm going to show you how to do the setup right now. And then later on, I'll show you the advanced way to do the setup. So this is the self-working way. Take the four eights, the four nines, drop those on top of the pack. And you're going to alternate them every other card. And here's an easy way in which you can do this. Uh, you grab the top and bottom card and pull those out. And you're going to see what's going to happen is you're going to alternate those cards just like this. So I'm going to do this for all the eights and all the nines, I think that's all of them, yep. And that's your setup. Now, if you wanna just go through manually and do this, you can do that as well. But the setup is this, is that every other card is an eight or a nine, and they are in odd positions. 
So that's important to remember. Uh, you can do even positions if you feel more comfortable with even positions. David originally talked about odd positions, so I'm just keeping that. Uh, what I mean by odd is that it, here are the cards and you'll see that they are in um, the odd number positions if you were to count down. So what that means is uh, the first card is a nine, the third card is an eight, uh, in this case the fifth card, the seventh card, the ninth card, the eleventh card, the thirteenth card, the fifteenth card, all odd number positions. If you wanted it to be at the even position, obviously one card has to be on top of that, and then it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 14, 16, whatever you can remember best or you feel more comfortable with. In this case, I'm going to put in the odd position uh, and that's going to help me out for this routine. And you'll follow along with those instructions. So that's your setup and that goes on top of the pack. And that's all you really have to know how to do. Now you can do a uh, shuffle just like this, where you shuffle the bottom portion of the cards, right? So I shuffle the bottom portion of the cards and then when I'm done, all I do is I take these two packets, flip them face down, and throw them on top of each other. And it looks like you just give the cards a quick mix, but really uh, the top packet still stays the same. Now I'm going to go to the person on my right here. I'm going to ask them to go ahead and cut off a small packet of cards. So in this case, let's say uh, you can even make it easier and say cut off a quarter of the pack or cut off less than half the pack. Uh, proper wording is great for magic because you say cut off a small packet of cards. Some people are like, oh, I thought that was a small packet. So if you say cut off less than half or cut off a quarter, they're gonna look and then they can figure out that's half. If they go too far, you can say, ah, that's, that's more than half, drop some, take less than half and correct them uh, without it looking weird, right? Because if it's a small packet, it doesn't matter. But if you want less than half, which is gonna make sense for the dealing, uh, this is the way to do it. So they cut off less than half, they do so, and they hold on to those cards. Now remember, they just cut off the portion in which the eights and nines are every other card in odd positions. And they're gonna hold on to that. Now we're tapping into some thinking from the Spanish school of thinking. So some of my favorite magicians, Dana de Ortiz, uh, Juan Tamariz, uh, fantastic, incredible thinking magicians. And we're using the Spanish school of thinking here by creating this pendulum effect where you go from left to right in your performance. Why does that matter? Well, when I go from left to right in my performance here, as you see in this routine, uh, people can't keep track of the routine. There's too much happening for their brain to process as opposed to take a card, put it back, I find it. Very simple, easy to follow. In this case, someone cuts a packet, someone picks a card, someone deals down at a number, we deal down at this number, they happen to match. That back and forth removes a lot of the method and a lot of the memory for the spectators that they can't keep track of and they can't figure it out an effect like this that is super self-working. This is super clever. So they cut off a packet, I come over here and I say, you're gonna go ahead and take out any card. Now I'm ignoring this person, right? People are forgetting what even took place. Uh, go ahead, you're gonna reach aside, take out any card, which they do. They showed around to everybody. While they showed around to everybody, I'm gonna push over eight cards. So in this case, I now have eight cards here. And I'm gonna tell the spectator to put their card back where they found it. This is not where they found it. They don't know that because they were showing their card around to everybody and I just pushed over eight cards to make it sound like it but you're placing their spectators card, in this case, the four of diamonds, into the ninth position. So eight cards go on top. So you put it here and you say, look, I'm gonna take these cards, drop these on top, give them a little mix, do the same thing as before where you shuffle off a few from the bottom, do the cut like this, and you're set to go. Uh, if you're more advanced, you can throw in some false cuts. I'll link to the video on false cuts if you don't know any, and that way you can learn some false cuts and throw it in. It's a good time for that to go in. But what has to happen is the spectators card is now at the ninth position easy to get to, right? Literally, as they showed around, you count eight, turn back, put it back. You can also do it where you don't spread the cards over, where you can simply count over eight cards as they're showing the card around, come back, say, put your card back and drop all these on top so they don't see the spread. And maybe it looks like more cards are put back. It's another way in which you can do it. And again, still keeping it completely easy because you just counted off of the cards when nobody was looking because they were showing the card around. Using that misdirection to your advantage. So their card is in the ninth position. Uh, now this spectator is going to deal the cards. Uh, I'm gonna reverse count them so I can do this face up. Now you're not gonna do this face up. You don't have to worry about the reverse count. That's just so you can see them face up. So this is the card packet that they expect you to cut off. They don't know the position or the setup of the cards, but you're gonna have them deal the cards and stop whenever they like. Now, as they deal, I want you to notice that every odd card is the nine or the eight. So all you have to do is count how many cards they deal when they stop. Pro tip here, don't let them just do this because they'll deal through fast. Say, I would like you to count slowly, feeling each card for intuition. So they'll deal off this card, say, place that down, 
place the next one down. And because you allow them to deal slowly and you're gonna go quiet while they deal, it's gonna force them to stop and not go past any of the eights or nines. They're not gonna go all the way through the packet. They could go through most of it, but they're not gonna go this far because A, silence is uncomfortable for our spectators. So by you being quiet and they're dealing slowly, they're not gonna sit there dealing all day. This is some professional psychological magic advice that we're going into here. Again, I love the Spanish school of thinking. You should definitely learn from them. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail to why this works, but you wanna be quiet, have them deal slowly, and they're gonna deal and they're gonna stop within your stack. So they go ahead, they start dealing nice and slow, and they stop. Now, while they're dealing, you're counting it so you know how many cards they have, right? Because you wanna know if they stopped at an odd card or even card. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say they dealt eight cards. Well, you know your card is an odd number, so you're gonna say take the next card and deal it onto the table because you wanna make sure you get to an odd number, in this case, uh, the ninth card. Now, if they don't do it that way, these are, there's two ways in which this works, right? Now, let's say they deal down to an odd number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you take the ninth card, so you, well, you dealt nine cards, take that, that last card you dealt and put it off to the side. There's, again, two ways in which you can do it. So that is uh, how you operate it. So let's do it face down because that's important to see. Deal down, I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't let them know I'm counting. I just count as long as they deal slowly. That's also why you have them deal slowly so you can keep track of how many cards. I know those are eight cards, so I say take the next card and deal it to the side because I want the ninth card. I want an odd number card to be placed down to the table. Now, uh, and again, just to show you, that'll be an eight. Now let's say they deal an odd number to the table. Let's say five, one, two, three, four, five. I know it's five. Take that card on the table that you dealt last and put it to the side. Now what's cool about this is because this is the eight, there's two random cards between this because we did every other card. So you could show the card that they dealt before and say, well, that's a 10, interesting. What about after? Oh, that's a two. It's gonna be two random cards. You don't know what they are. They're just interlaced in between them. But that allows you to show that the outcome could have been different by there being a two or that there would have been a 10. Two possibly different outcomes, uh, but you landed on eight. So now you can tell the spectator uh, you landed on eight. And again, just as in there was two outs here, there's two outs here. And what I mean by the two outs is that it could have been an odd number or even number, the same thing's gonna happen here. I know the spectator's card is in the ninth position. So I let them deal eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take the next card, put it on the table. That is the ninth card. That is the card I want them to deal. So again, I see eight, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take the next card, place it on the table. Now, if for some reason that we ended up with a nine, right? So let's say we stopped on a nine instead of the eight, uh, which happens all the time. Uh, you say count nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Take the last card you dealt and put it to the side. Again, you're controlling their outcome by making sure that that ninth card is the one that gets dealt. So, uh, you know, when David Blaine teaches this in the original video, which is linked down below, you can see the confusion in the people's face because there's a lot of thinking going on, a lot taking place. But what happens, again, uh, here, there's uh, one of two possibilities, them landing on an even or odd, and you control which card they deal. The same thing here, they can land on the eight or the nine, but if they land on nine, the ninth card is their card. If they land on eight, then you have to take the eight cards and deal the next one. So those are your two possibilities of what's gonna happen for this routine. And that's basically it. So uh, really simple stuff there, but a lot of complex thinking taking place. Let's talk about the uh, more advanced versions and then I'll run you through this one more time uh, really slow just so you can remember exactly what to do. So for the advanced version, first off, uh, if you're familiar with how to cull cards, you can simply run through the pack and cull the eights and the nines as you start the trick, right? So I go through, I see all the eights and nines, I'm removing them from the packs, just like this, right? So you can see that. And that's gonna give me all my eight, I think I missed one actually, because I was talking. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get all my eights and nines to the top of the pack. So now I have all the eights and nines on top. And again, the order doesn't matter, it's irrelevant to this trick. So now that the eights and nines are on top of the pack, this is my starting position personally. And uh, I come out, I do the same thing where I shuffle off some from the bottom, do that, well, it looks like a cut, but it's not. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. This right hand package just goes back on top. Eights and nines still up there, ready to go. 
Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do, uh, this is my setup for the effect, I'm gonna do a Pharaoh shuffle. And we talk about a Pharaoh shuffle, I think in the video with Avery Xavier Spade, so I'll link it and you can watch it and he talks about the Pharaoh shuffle. Uh, it has to be a perfect Pharaoh shuffle from these cards. What I mean by that is these eight cards, the uh, eights and nines that are on top have to be perfectly interwoven, but you don't have to have a perfect shuffle. So what I mean is that in this case, I can shuffle like this perfectly and now I'm set to go because my first card, my top card is a nine. So I'm still in the odd number position where I know every card to be odd. Uh, another way to do that is by simply, and this is a little bit easier actually, surprisingly, it's a good way to, to practice the, the Pharaoh shuffle is you're gonna Pharaoh just randomly into the pack like this. But now these cards are all good. But what do I do with this top stock? Well, because I want this card on top, I'm gonna squeeze these cards like this. And all I'm gonna do is let that top packet fall off as I just pull it out from underneath and fall onto my hand, put these cards on top, and then I can go ahead and mix them together. Uh, and that's a, like, kind of like a straddle pharaoh uh, technique, um, but it's a great way to get into it. Now I'm positioned with every other odd card being the, um, the number that I need to be, an eight or a nine. So I can follow the same procedure. Again, you're gonna go ahead, cut the packet, they hold on to those cards. I go to my left here, I allow someone to pick a card from here. They're gonna place that down the table. Same idea, they show to everyone, I look away, I count off eight cards. So then now I'm in my right hand, I say place your card back, in this case the Jack of Hearts. They place it back, all these cards go on top. Do that same, just shuffle a few cards in the bottom. Do that cut again if you know some false cuts this is now a good time to do that if you feel comfortable with uh false shuffles again go ahead and throw in some false shuffles why not whatever you feel comfortable with but what i do know now is that the uh, ninth card is going to be the jack of hearts the speculators card i go back here swing to this side have them deal they stop whenever again i just keep track one two three four five six seven i know it's odd they turn this one over because that's an odd number it's a nine now the easy part is done i just go one two three four five six seven eight nine turn that ninth card over it's their card the jack of hearts uh, remember that this outcome could be a little bit different over here so let's say they landed on an eight uh, in this case here we go an eight uh, they, they stopped on an eight and I can say, well, if you we would have stopped one card before, it would have been a queen, different outcome. One card after would have been a 10, different outcome. You stopped on an eight. Can you go ahead and remove eight cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because I know their card is ninth, I say, great, so take the next card, deal it to the table. Uh, what was your card? They say Jack of Hearts and you can show uh, that number landed at the Jack of Hearts. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful coincidence effect, really simple. Uh, remember to join the email list down below. If you got any questions, you know what to do. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think if you like this one, and I will see you all in the next episode.